Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and update you guys from that video I made, which was basically I finished the campaign, I've kind of started mapping, and where do I go from here? Now this one is kind of a jump ahead because I did play a little bit here. Um, so we are currently level 93, almost level 94. But don't be intimidated by my character level as my gear is pretty shit, right? Leveling up in Path of Exile just effectively means not dying. If you're not dying that much and you're playing a lot, you're effectively going to level. But let's talk about what I have completed since then. If you look at my atlas here, you'll notice a large amount of it has been completed. Um, this is primarily through Kirak, as on my starting atlases, I like to go full Kirak. And the process of basically using Kirak for map completion is pretty easy. Basically, you'll look in your map and... If you say, say you have only um, white maps and yellow maps completed, and you're all the way up to here at tier 10, right? So you're all the way up here. But you only have one tier 10 map. And you run that map, and you get nothing out of it. So now you're all the way back down to, say, tier 5 or tier 6. You can use Kirak here to open up his shop, right? Pull his highest level map, which for me will be 10. Maybe drop a tier 11 map out of it. So now you can get your sustain back without having to go through the the tiers. Also, whenever you click any map from here, so like if I open this right now, opening this is going to allow you to refresh Kirak Shop. And this is where I use most of my currency at the beginning, so chance orbs, uh, alchemy orbs, even my chaos, to get these completions. Because in reality, chaos for me in SSF, I'm going to be getting majority of it back from Exarch Altars in the future, like these things over here and over here uh, more specifically this so that i don't really mind the map completion for me is very important now i'm gonna go ahead and jump on into a t16 map and show you guys how it looks i always get questions about people asking you know what are the minimum requirements for rf to clear t16 very common question well here you go this is my ssf character i'm rocking a 150k rf dps and a fire trap of 194k some pretty small numbers to be honest we don't even have our elder helm yet we also do not have our ignite prolif yet so that is something we're going to be working on and i also don't have my anoint yet the anoint is extremely important because it covers so much physical mitigation that this build really really needs However, I do have a Shaper Shield already, a Shaper Life Game on Block Shield, which is going to carry my ass for quite a bit, and we'll talk about that process as well as we get a little further into the video. Oh, here's a Bismuth. Uh, there is no shot I can charge this for that much, so I'm going to just do like... Yeah, that. I don't know why I call it Bismuth. It's uh, whatever it's called. Oh, got an Explode. Good shit. Now, on this character as well, uh, I will talk about my gear progression after this map. I went Rise of the Phoenix into Dawnbreaker into a Shaper Shield. Now, I get so many questions about, you know, can I use X Shield over Shaper Shield? And the answer is no. The only shield you can really use as a replacement to the Shaper Shield is the Surrender, because it also has really high life gain on block, or recover life on block. The point of the Shaper Shield is to basically make it so that little hits get turned into healing, bigger hits get mitigated so they don't kill you as much. And that's solely from the recover X amount of life on block. The more you build your character, the stronger that recovery on block will feel. You can see here, even in a T16 environment, like it's pretty smooth sailing. Like, yeah, it may not be the fastest, right? I'm, I'm still taking damage here and there, but it's a pretty weak character, all things considered. Now you can see my single target. Uh, everyone can go make breakfast during this time. It's uh, nothing nothing special over here. I like to actually see if I can drag any mobs to the boss, but that didn't seem to be the go. Oh, there's, there's one. We'll get close to like a 50% damage increase when we get an Elder Helm, so I'm not too concerned about that. All right, that is our clear. Now, this character is also very weak because if you look at my life regen, it's only 950. That is very low. Um, and the reason it's so low is I still don't have an immortal flesh um, or a life regen belt. This is just basically a chaos res high life belt. So, um, 
yeah let's talk about this here then we'll go into gear progression so with this current atlas i favored basically three things number one map sustain you can see that located here i took every map sustain node this will give me an abundance of maps to go through at my you know however i want to i won't feel map starved at all and i'll have excess maps for my map runners later furthermore this will help me get t17 maps but that's not really a big deal right now next thing you'll notice i have my two void stones acquiring your two void stones you pretty much are following this thing on the right here see how it says collect map bosses and t14 plus maps there's also going to be one for eater of worlds and searing exart they're going to want you to climb all the way up to t16 and you'll have two boss fights in between and then the big boss fights at tier 16. after you do that the next up thing is maven now doing maven maven is a lot tougher than exarch and eater and exarch and eater can be killed in just basic life res gear but when you're getting to things like maven maven is when i would recommend like an elder helm and a shaper shield for example probably a six link too but rf is mainly aoe not single target and the last thing that i have done is i have incorporated my uh basically intelligence gathering which is syndicate um syndicate got me a lot of my early game gear so if you look at this belt for example uh, actually this belt did not have syndicate do i have a piece of gear that was unveiled here's one see this hat how it has cold and chaos res this means i unveiled cold and chaos it hit a really high dexterity naturally with a t1 life roll and i crafted increased damage the increased damage is from syndicate um, same thing here, Betrayal, Syndicate, whatever, I always miss, like say their names wrong. So there's an increased damage roll. Here we unveiled the Ink AoE. Uh, on the boots, we unveiled Onslaught. So you can see most of my gear is, if not given to me from them, crafted with it, right? Here you'll see Fire and Chaos. Here is plus one gem, here is plus one gem. All of that is Betrayal here. Actually, damage over time is not, but that's because my weapon is kind of weird. So that's pretty much the character gear. Um, looking at my character right now i'm not a big fan of my weapon as it has a spell damage roll so definitely could get a new weapon over here i've got frost blink punishment and life tap uh, my helmet is not an elder helm so top priority is getting an elder helm downside my current helm has 17 percent life regenerate which means going to an elder helm without immortal flesh is probably gonna cause me to really not like it because my sustain is gonna be so bad here we've got fire trap swift affliction trap in mine and life tap over here we have our Shaper Shield, which actually hit maximum fire res. Pretty cool shield. Um, I do need to divine it to try to get the life on block higher, and I need to either get an Exalt to slam a suffix, and I'm going to hope for crit damage reduction, or I'm going to farm Beast Theory on my second Atlas and do Prefix to Suffix to pull one of these prefixes down to a suffix and then Exalt slam and hope I hit life. Um, or there's some other methods, but yeah, that's pretty much the shield. Talk about how I got the shield in a minute. Um, amulet, I would like to have dot multi or plus fire. Rings are okay, but I'd like to see more useful stats. For example, the strength roll does not help. And here, the, the light radius does not help, so I plan on crafting new rings soon. I do like the life rolls on them. Uh, my body armor, I found a grand ring nail, which is a new base, so the armor is pretty decent on it, but realistically, it's pretty shit. Could recraft this for percent physical damage reduction. You'll notice on the Eldritch Implicit, I have physical taken from hits is cold. Uh, this is the top tier modifier for mitigating damage. Don't worry about the maximum chaos res. I don't have many. Um, I don't have many of these yet because I'm, um, you know, character is still kind of fresh and we need to farm them. So this ideally just gets replaced with like cloak of flame or lightning coil. We'll have to see kind of when that when that opportunity presents itself. These boots are really nice. Downside, they... Actually, I just realized they can be exalted still. Uh, they don't have increased life regeneration rate, which is the number one thing I want here. Um, that or Chaos Res. Since I, I getting Annihilation's approach in SSF is a much bigger hurdle. Belt, we already talked about. I'd love to just plug in an Immortal Flesh here, to be honest. And my gloves are pretty nice. Life regenerate, cold lightning res. I actually need to swap that lightning res at the bottom to fire. That'll give me another another bulk of uh, regen. Um, prefixes are okay. It just has a life roll, and I crafted plus one gems. I'm spamming my embers to try to get ignite proliferation here. So <clears throat> that's pretty much my gear. Um, just to cover my links again here, I'm just leveling a swift affliction. I've got tempest shield, flesh and stone, Ellie focus, righteous fire, burning, life tap, efficacy. Six link will be swift affliction, life tap, shield charge, faster attacks, enduring cry. This is where my level one life tap is. You only need one level one life tap to trigger the life tap, and then you're good. 
Here we've got Blood Rage, Summon Skitterbot, Unbound Ailment, and Purity of Fire. Actually, need of all this, hope I can get a 22. And one thing I'm going to be doing next, I'm thinking of going into Bestiary on my second Atlas. So I'm thinking Atlas 2 is going to be a Bestiary Delirium Atlas. And the purpose of this is two things. Number one, uh, getting Bestiary for like prefix to suffix, suffix to prefix, crafting random uniques. Bestiary has a lot of good SSF stuff. And number two, Delirium, so that I can remove this part of my tree alongside this part of my tree in favor of going into a large eight passive cluster and then two uh, medium clusters with flow of life. Other downside, I need to actually have jewels at that point. Furthermore, talking about jewels, we did get lucky and out of a ritual, I pulled a two max fire trap throwing speed burning damage jewel. Doesn't have life, but that two max fire uh, is very, very, very welcome. So I'm a big fan of that right there. Anyway, I think that is pretty much the character. Um, as for, you know, where we're going from here, like I said, I want an Elder Helm. I really want the Immortal Flesh. Going to be looking at a six link. Got to farm a couple of exalts, one for my shield, one for uh, my boots. Really need the freaking, I cannot, you know, overstate enough how much I need the, uh, whatchamacallit, Immortal Flesh here. Otherwise, we have to go for a recovery belt, which I could also craft. Um, before we end, though, I'm going to explain how I acquired these. So, over in my Scarab tab, there is this Scarab here called <clears throat> Apparition Shrine. And I don't know exactly how it works, but to my knowledge, when you get this shrine, you basically get a buff that makes you drop random Conqueror gear. So, mine, mine picked Al Hesman. So, what I did is I basically juiced my map as much as possible. I made it, you know, T16. Uh, I got extra mobs on it. I threw in, like, all my Domination Scarabs, right? Whatever I had for Density, basically. Pick Domination, because that's basically Domination is just giving me a bonus Density from my Atlas here, right? I have a chance to be guarded by a Magic Pack. And as I was blasting, the mobs were dropping Influence gear. So I, for example, got a Influenced Shagreen Tower Shield along with a Conqueror Helmet. What you can do with this piece of gear is if you farm Harvest you can actually re-roll the influence. So, whereas this may be Conqueror right now, sorry, this may be Alhazman, I want it to be Elder, and I can spend a thousand blue life force to do this, and potentially change it to Elder, right? So now it went to, what is that, like Baron or whatever? And then that's actually Shaper, right? So that's a prime example of how you can kind of do that. It's pretty nice because it allows you to uh, kind of manipulate the gear in different ways. Rather than just chaining guardians or whatever it is you're doing, you could pursue a different method. And I really like that about SSF is you get to utilize different parts of the game where people normally wouldn't. And then this hunter belt, I think, can actually be crafted. Uh, I do, considering my current belt's not actually that good. I have to go look and see if this can hit life recovery. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch our progress live every day at twitch.tv slash pox, except for Sundays. Take care. See you guys all tomorrow.